Today, we are gathered here in Emancipation Hall to honor the courageous patriotism of the women's Air Force service pilots, to honor them with the Congressional Gold Medal, the highest honor Congress can bestow. They were known as the WASPs, and they played a key role in aviation and the defense of their country when they were called upon during World War II. Among those women who gathered to be honored in Washington, D.C. on a cool spring March morning was 90-year-old Barbara London. Well, they all looked old. <laughs> we're all, we were all a lot older, I'll tell you. Well, it was fun to see them, because some of those girls I hadn't seen since World War II. Flying under the direction of the United States Army Air Forces, the WASP were civilian female pilots, but they were run just like the military. They spent most of their time ferrying military aircraft across the country. Every WASP in the air meant one more male pilot who was free for combat duty overseas. We had an opportunity, a tremendous opportunity, to be allowed to fly military airplanes. I mean, it, 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 we didn't think it was ever going to happen. And here we were right in the middle of it, 21 years old, and the government gave me a million dollar airplane and said, go fly. Barbara had been a student at the University of Washington before the war. She learned to fly as part of the civilian pilot training program. She was a natural, and before long she'd earned her wings, and she became one of the 25 original WASPs. Her brother-in-law, Charlie London, was also a pilot, and he became an ace flying P-47s in combat over the skies of Europe. Quickly, Barbara London was in the vanguard of female pilots, and by the age of 21, she was flying fighter planes across the country, occasionally after reading little more than the flight manual. There's an old saying, if you can get us started, you could fly it. It only had one seat. So uh, all pursuit were only one seat airplanes. So if you flew a P-51 or a P-47 or a P-38, the first time you flew it, you were all by yourself. So you did get the manual out and you read the book and you had to take a written test, transition, gave you an oral exam. You had to sit in the cockpit and know where everything was on the dashboard that you could find it with your eyes closed. Then they gave you the key and said, go out and fly. And you're all by yourself the first time. Most of the training for the WASP took place in Sweetwater, Texas, but Barbara was stationed in Long Beach, California, where she was assigned as a squadron commander. London had command, on average, of between 30 and 40 female pilots. Well, we were sitting right in, Long, in L.A., right in the middle of all the factories. We had Douglas, North American, Lockheed, Convair. So we were in a very fortunate spot. The girls in other parts of the United States didn't have that, all those factories. So we got airplanes were coming out of the assembly line every day and they were piling up. And what we would do is we would pick them up from the factory when they were ready to go. Never, they probably, 90% of them had never been flown before. There was an inherent danger in flying aircraft that had never been airborne, and the WASP paid a steep price for the war effort. I lost six girls of my girls in Long Beach were killed, yes. A couple were mid-airs, <clears throat> uh, one couple were landing accidents. Um, it, was, it, was, it was very sad, but we did have fatalities, yes. Barbara London would go on to marry a pilot after the war and raise a family. Aviation would always play an important part in their lives, and one of her daughters, Terry, would go on to become one of the very first female commercial airline pilots in the country. Her granddaughter, Kelly Reinhardt, is a corporate jet pilot and is a volunteer for Angel Flight West. It was only fitting that when Barbara London was ready to go back to Washington, D.C. for the gold medal ceremony, that it was her granddaughter who was the pilot aboard the Angel Flight. Barbara London remains very humble about her contributions to her country during World War II. I think probably the girls flying in Afghanistan should have gotten it first. Uh, they're the ones that really deserve the medal. But it was a very nice ceremony. It was very well done. And uh, it was done to appreciate what we did in World War II. And I think it was particularly good for the families of the girls that were killed. Acts of bravery, courage, and sacrifice were commonplace during World War II. For the WASPs, finally, we as a nation are saying thank you.